I put it in a newsletter form and um, it's weird, you know, even when I look back and I think like, what, what was I thinking? Like, right. why, <laughs> why? But um, I think probably like many of us here, I was also the person in my circle of friends that was like, where do I go to do this? Or what should I make for my boyfriend? And, um, and, and so I kind of, you know, the inception of it was really just for my, my little community. And I sort of didn't, you know, I kind of stupidly didn't think larger at first when I was first doing it. So it was a, a newsletter, an email. Right, it was an email. And then you let people subscribe to it? That the first it was for people you knew, but then you let people no, subscribe? No, then, then I just said, oh, well, I'll just, you know, do it, make it public. And, and so it started, it started off being a public thing. And when, I think a lot of us have had that moment where you realize it's no longer just your, your mom and your friends and family. You've got, like, random people. Yeah. who are reading you, like, do you remember that? When you realize, oh, this is now beyond I remember my thinking, circle. Yeah, because when I first sent it out, then I, I had a moment where I, I thought, like, what, what, you know, who am I communicating with? And, um, but, you know, I really, I sort of had this, I had a lot of passion, and, um, and I, I'm very passionate about, you know, travel and health and wellness and food and, um, <laughs> and trying to become a better person and so I think I was sort of in, in, in essence I was using the website um, to get closer to myself in a way to be able to ask questions to get closer to my community um, yeah and so we'll all forgive the expression but at some point you like super leaned in you hired. I, I mean, love that expression. I know, but like, you know, we had Cheryl here two years ago when it first came out, so it begins to feel like, oh, God, well, how many ways can we apply lean in? But well, I think it applies here. For because Cheryl Sandberg, we'll apply it. We'll forever. apply it everywhere. That's right. That's right. Um, so, but, but I mean, I was looking deeper into your site. Like, I got your newsletter and I looked at your site, but I never actually went and looked at your team mm -hmm. page. And so, in preparation for this, I just kept clicking because there were more people and more people. And, of course, you hired Lisa Gersh as your CEO, who's a total media powerhouse. So, I mean, you are super leaning into this being a media company. This yeah. is um, um, a lot of investment of time, resources, and energy in your personal brand. Like, was, was that a gradual thing that, that happened? Or at some point, did you sit down and say, this is a business, I'm going to start like yeah. focusing great business plan, focus on growth, focus on all of that stuff. Yeah, that's a, a good question. You know, I think it, it, it really kind of came about in a very small way, like me in my kitchen with my girlfriends, like talking about ideas. And then what started to happen was essentially um, there was a trust that started to get built between myself and my readers. And there was a lot of traction that started to happen. If, I recommend something that I found or that I love, then I was starting to, you know, have this amazing feedback from these businesses saying, um, this has a real measurable big impact. And I was like, oh wow, that's interesting. And so it was kind of all piece by piece, you know, it was a very slow, very organic process over years, and I've been doing it for a really long right. time, until I started started to think, well, I wonder how I wonder how I would do this if I wanted to turn it into a business, if I wanted to monetize it, do I want to do that? Yeah, would I ever right. have advertising? Would I ever sell anything? What would I sell? Um, and the process just, you know, it just was a slow evolution. And then at a certain point, um, my original CEO was in London and this guy, Seb Bishop, who I was, I met through friends and he said, I really like what you're doing and have you thought about making it a business? And I said, I don't really think I have the experience or capacity to do that. And he said, well, I, I could help you do that. And so then we kind of started to do that. And then I ended up moving to Los Angeles and then Lisa Gersh came on and when she came on, it was, she was like, okay, this, this is what's happening. You know, I was like, okay. So. Well, I noticed the term curated commerce on your site now, which I don't think was probably there a, a while back. What does that mean to you? Um, I think a lot of us have seen the, the monetization model for online has really changed so much over the last 10 years since we've been doing it from pure advertising, now branded content, but the whole commerce and curated commerce thing right. 
Um, what, what does that mean in, in your world? And why is that the chosen differentiator? Yeah, I think in our world it means like, look, we are all really busy women. A lot of us are mothers. We're trying to achieve a lot. And I think the, the feed, what I'm looking for is first a, a funnel. Like I wanna know, I, there's so much available, there's so much out there, there's so much content, there's, there's so many options. And I think if you have a strong point of view, um, which, you know, I have a strong point of view and a strong aesthetic, for better or for worse, you might like it, you might not like it, but if you like it, you're gonna come to the site and you're gonna have a edited down version. And I think that that's what I want. You know, I can't, I need help in doing that. And my friends, you know, we all kind of, I think, are looking for solutions. We're looking to make good choices. We're looking to make smart choices. We're looking to save time. We're looking to maximize the great moments in our lives with our kids and our friends. And so the idea that, for me, curated commerce really is the point of view. And it's, to, it's you know, with the broader view of making easier choices. And I think there's just so much out there as a consumer. You know, I when I go on a big shopping site, I feel overwhelmed and I don't necessarily, you know, I, sometimes I just shut down and I don't convert, you know, to a customer. Well, that's that famous study that Malcolm Gladwell talked about, I think in Blink, about how when you can choose from three jams, everybody buys a jam, but when you have 30 jams to choose from, right. everybody buys jam. Right. Because it's too, it's too much jam. <laughs> <laughs> so. So Can you really have too much jam? Uh, I, I know that's the question. That's a natural question. Um, so when you're curating, and I think this was a question that came up in a whole conversation I had on Facebook, particularly triggered by uh, my friend on Facebook, Danielle Simmons, about who are you curating for? And now that you have such a big team, what is the vision of who the goof woman is? Um, are you trying... Um, do you, do you have some particular, you know, a lot of brands, for instance, will have different customer models where they like, here's Sally, here's Patricia, and they have whole things they write about who they're creating for. And there's that whole line between aspirational and completely unapproachable. Right. Um, how, and how do you think about that? And how do you convey that to a team who is now curating on your behalf, right? Right, well, I mean, yeah, I still do <laughs> a lot you know, myself, and I, but yeah, I do think that's um, an interesting point, and, you know, I think when I, when I set out to do it, I really, um, I, I think I was sort of looking for things that spoke to me and moved me. We have a really broad range of customers, and we have product across all different